Here is a 2023 Toyota Venza Limited in titanium glow with beige interior. What is the difference between the trims, comparable rivals, and is this a pro or a con in the sense of getting the best MPGs for a hybrid in everyday use? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. It starts LED headlights that brush into the chrome surrounding, gloss black on the top tier. We get the blue oval that's going to be around the Toyota badging, front parking sensors, 360 degree reverse camera because this is the limited trim, which is the only trim that will option that. The lower is going to get the matte black active grille shutter is going to be on all trims and the chrome setup with the matte black will start on the XLE. LED fog lamps, that starts on the XLE, 8.2 inches of clearance, standard all-wheel drive, which you're not going to receive that in the new Honda CRV hybrid. 18-inch wheels come standard. The Limited gets 19-inch wheels. The matte black that's going to surround the lower skirt, that's going to be standard on all trims. Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 Plus, which will include the pre-collision, pedestrian detection, full speed range, dynamic radar, cruise control with lane departure and steering assist, automatic high beams, roadside assist and lane tracing assist, blind spot monitoring and LED fog lights that's going to be on the power folding side view mirrors. And all trims will have the 2.5 liter four cylinder hybrid engine with 219 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque paired to an eCVT transmission achieving 40 MPGs for the city and 37 MPGs for the highway. This is going to have more horsepower than the CRV because that's at 190 horsepower. Torque, you'll have three more pound feet with the CRV. The CRV is going to have better MPGs for the city, but less MPGs for the highway. So it really just depends on whether you want a Lexus exterior styling or you want to go to a Honda. Now, Towing is going to be better in the Honda. It's not necessarily recommended for the Vinza. Dual exhaust outlet, so it looks more sporty and athletic. Rear parking sensors. The light bar starts on the XLE LED. Standard LED brake lights, and I like the futuristic style that they project because that has a similar twist to the new BZ4X. Power lift gate. Cargo starts at 28.1 cubic feet. Underneath the floor, we get a spare tire. Split fold the rear bench, if you're tall like me in the back, at a 40-60 split, increasing cargo to 55.1 cubic feet. We have a dual exhaust setup for this hybrid. Let's go inside and start it up so you can hear that exhaust. Mm -hmm. Twelve-way power seat adjustment for the driver, eight-way power seat adjustment for the passenger, heated and ventilated because it's the limited. The LE will get cloth power seat for the driver. The XLE will get soft tech interior seating, memory for the driver for the limited. Headroom, no issues, nor is leg space. It's a deep foot well, even though you have this V-shape for the center cluster. The Venza starts off with the JBL audio sound system, which is an option for the XLE. Standard is a six speaker setup with an eight inch touch screen. This is the 12.3 with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Wi-Fi hotspot, and optional navigation. Put it into reverse, and we have a 360 degree reverse camera full trajectory with the digital rear view mirror, which makes it even more optimal for visibility. It's edgeless and auto dimming. Dual climate control settings, that starts on the XLE. The push button start with the standard QI wireless charging pad. EV mode or driver mode select. Standard is a seven inch driver cluster. When you get to the limited, you get the fully digital reader that can go through an array of information and a 10 inch heads up display. Standard leather wrap steering wheel, multi-function with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. The center cluster gets the wood inlays with the satin aluminum and it's gonna be soft materials pretty much throughout the whole interior. The key fob for the Toyota Venza. 
open up and you have some areas that you could put some espressos. Move that out the way and it's a pretty deep storage pocket with a 12 volt. It is soft. I like that they have the wood here also. The dashboard has the satin aluminum contrast stitching and piping that just give more of an elegant twist to the interior and it bulges into the door panel. It's all soft materials like I was saying even in the center except for the wood. One touch up and down for all the windows. The storage pocket has a beverage holder carved out and you can fit a total of eight cup and bottles throughout the interior. Optional stargaze pano moonroof starts on the nightshade edition. For the back seats, headroom is still optimal. It does get a little bit more tight here, but you still have a sufficient amount. Leg space, the same thing. You're not gonna have any issues at all, even if you're tall. Storage behind both of the front seats, air vents in the center, two USB ports. This is pushed back a little bit. It's soft with some more cup holders. The door panels have the same configuration as the front, so it's all soft materials in an area that you can fit one beverage. Sliding over into the center, the floor is not completely flat. The rails are pushed up, so feet space will be shared, Butt and shoulder space is not really that bad, and head space is still optimal. 2.5 liter with 219 horsepower. We have it in sport mode to see what 176 pound-feet of torque looks like. Here it is. And the brakes. It does have some performance on it. It feels pretty good. And I mean, Dynamically speaking, this is an SUV. It is top heavy, so don't go crazy. When you have anything over eight inches of clearance, that's quite a bit. But you can still do some maneuverability, and this is a hybrid. Going against the Honda CRV, this is gonna have a lot more horsepower, and torque is gonna be three pound feet less. Gas is gonna be a 50-50, meaning they're gonna be better in one, this is gonna be better in one. Towing, it's gonna to be better for the CRV. But the interior feels a little bit more athletic. You do sit up a little bit higher. You have more luxury amenities. That's gonna take me to some pros and cons, and starting off with is the pros. Each vehicle gets the same powertrain, which makes it easier to option and standard all-wheel drive, which you don't receive that in the Honda. gonna hear the hybrid engine when you give it full gas we're gonna throw it into normal we'll just put it into eco mode to see if there's any weight that's added to the pedal the steering is also light some other pros you can still option features on the vehicle when you start getting to the xle it's kind of a sweet spot underneath the nightshade edition because you can still get a lot of the features in which you receive on that tier the limited gives you access to the heads-up display and the digital gauge cluster, which are standard features, and you can only option them here, which is a con, because it puts it very similar to the Honda segment in which you have to go to the top tier to also receive the heads-up display. Digital rear view mirror is definitely a nice touch because it makes visibility awesome for the back. You don't have to even really worry about blind spot monitoring. And the front will have a little bit longer of an overhang than the CRV, but it's not something that's displeasing because of the way the seat is designed here. On the CRV, I feel it looks a little bit more athletic looking through the front windscreen here is going to be more of a luxury or lexus look that's going to take me to some cons the center cluster it's more soft materials but it's pushed back more so if you are shorter than me it will become an issue where you're only using it for your elbows turn radius at a stop point we're going to take it a little slow because it does drift just a touch into the third lane but not so much as you're noticing. And let's rock and roll for a second. So it shows you whether you're an eco, normal, or sport, it's still going to be athletic when you push the pedal. Another con is you can't tow, or it's not really recommended to tow with the Vinza, whereas the CRV you can tow up to a thousand pounds on the hybrid trim. I like the digital rear view mirror, but where the camera is placed, it's so much higher up that even trucks, I can't see their wheels. I see the bottom of their bumpers. So just maybe configuring that a little bit better. This center cluster 
loses a little bit of real estate because they're trying to make it look more futuristic and cool, but it would be more usable if it was just a little bit more open. And another con would be to turn up and down the climate control. You have to either push it one by one by one, or if you hold it, it goes kind of slow upwards. You can't really slide it where it's gonna go super fast. Overall craftsmanship and materials that's used is better in the interior of this than the CRV. The price are going to be pretty similar. Both of them are hybrid, so it's kind of a preference in the sense of, do you wanna option the vehicle that gets a little bit more gas on one end or on the other? But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2023 Toyota Venza Limited for our car review.